Assalamu alaikum. And could you adjust the light, please? I need to see the audience. So, uh, I mean, as much as I like Wi-Fi, as much as I hate it, everybody's using it, nobody's going to listen to me, so. <laughs> and I came here feeling a little young, now I feel very old. Someone says he graduated in 88 and he feels old. I graduated in 79. Someone says she had a toy that she pulled the string off, you know, to make sounds. I made the sounds when I was young. I was the youngest, so I was always playing the Indian and I always lost. So anyways, um, I'm electrical engineer by background. Back then that was the only kind of uh, programmers there was. Um, we uh, used to use tapes back then and magnetic tapes uh, and we had to put you know two markers for the end of the tape and all that stuff. Anyways, um, when I graduated uh, electrical engineering I uh, did uh, a master's and a PhD in electromagnetics and after that um, I got hired by the phone company and they were moving from 1G, I don't believe 1G came to Morocco in cellular phones uh, that was uh, analog phones, and um, they wanted to move to 2G, so they asked me what's the best technology we could use for 2G. Of course, I didn't know anything about communications at that time, so I hired a friend of mine, his name was Michel Fatouche, and uh, he was also Egyptian, um, and uh, we were studying together in Cairo. So he did the coding and modulation part for me, and I did the uh, propagation part. And, um, you know, we realized that out of the six proposed technologies, GSM and a predecessor to it, IS-54, were the best technologies and, you know, we recommended that to the phone company and they were the first to launch 2G in the world. But we realized that there were problems with the communications and we tried to solve them. We invented something called the phase estimator, which reduced the irreducible bit error rates. Irreducible meant it could not be reduced, but we reduced it, and a company, Rockwell, asked us to put it in a device, and we tried, and it, um, in theory, it improved the communications by about a thousand times, meaning for a, a signal that was a thousand times weaker, you get the same uh, communications, uh, same errors. Um, but it didn't work, it only improved it about one and a half times. And um, the reason for that was that telephones themselves were not designed properly um, or were designed with the um, you know, parts that were available at the time. Um, the crystals were not very accurate. Um, you know, everything was not right. And um, engineers by training, if you find a problem, you go to the book and find the solution and use it and kept adding coding and modulation and, you know, all kinds of complicated things. Um, Michel told me that he had a, he learned of another technology called OFDM and that, uh, you know, he wants to talk to me about it and I refused. I said, you know, I've wasted enough time on your devices. I'm a phone company. You know, I need to do services. In any case, he threatened me that, you know, our friendship is over if we don't sit and talk about this. I sat with him for half an hour, listened to OFDM, and I loved it. It's a technology where um, uh, in FM transmission, you use a channel 98.2. The next channel must be 98.4, which is 200 kilohertz apart. The uh, FM communications only needs 50 kilohertz. The reason you leave 150 extra is in case the crystals move and, you know, you don't want one channel to spill over the next channel. Um, in OFDM, you give all the available channels to a single user, so this problem is gone. So at least there is three times as much communications or four times as much communications. In reality, you get 10 times more. So it, it's a very, very good technology. Of course, I saw the beauty of it straight away and I, you know, did some changes and I, you know, helped invent what's called wideband OFDM. Wideband OFDM is a technology used in the 11G, uh, A and N standards, uh, which is the Wi-Fi of today. They're all, it's also used in the 4G in, in, in its entirety. Um, the entire 4G standard, the WiMAX standard, was written by uh, ourselves. The, um, um, of course, the IEEE, uh, you know, the 802.16 did a lot of work on it, but the, um, the, the head of 
of the, the, the chair of the committee and you know, everybody else, many of his helpers were from YLAN. The actual name YMAX is a name that was a variation of YLAN, our company. And when the YMAX forum got started, uh, three of its members were YLAN. You know, uh, two subsidiaries of YLAN and YLAN and Nokia and Ensemble were the founders of the YMAX forum. And we stayed the chair of it till 2006, I believe. Um, 3G was more of an accident. Um, the day we filed the patent on uh, Wi-Fi or on the uh, WOFDM, uh, you know, I told the, the Michelle that I wanted to include security. I wanted to add some level of security into the device, and Michelle didn't want it. So I phoned the lawyer behind his back, and I told him, just add a line, please, in the patent. And we added a line whereby we multiplied the signal before it went into a Fourier transform times a, you know, a, a random complex uh, numbers that had a unity amplitude. Um, in any case, we, we did that, and uh, it got written. And six months later, we had started a company. I just need to tell you a story. Um, Michelle and I, of course, when we invented WFDM, we thought we're going to be very rich. You know, we really talked about millions of dollars. And um, it, it kept getting lower and lower. You know, we, we didn't want to start a company. So we sent two pagers to the likes of IBM, you know, who never responded to us, the likes of Apple, um, the um, AT&T. Uh, AT&T had a very nice thing. They sent it to another company that did the review, and the uh, reviewer wrote, short of making men sexier to women and curing dandruff, these guys claim that they have invented everything, you know. So, um, you know, we ignored that. I still have the letter. Um, Apple um, said they're working on something similar. We didn't say it, uh, we were doing OFDM, but we were doing high speed. They said we're working on something high speed, and you know we we cannot sign any agreements on it. Um, Siemens signed, and uh, we talked to them. In any case, um, but nothing was happening. So we our expectations got lower to the level of ten thousand dollars. And I remember Michelle calling me and saying, "Is it ten thousand each or ten thousand together?" We were in the real estate business together, and I told him, well, at least we'll get some bathrooms fixed, you know. Um, in any case, um, you know, uh, about six months later, someone had convinced us that we were not going to get anywhere until we started a company and built prototypes. We had emulated the product, so OFDM was fully functional to us. We had sent it over the air and received it, and, you know, we were communicating, but not real time, because processors were not fast enough then. Um, so six months later, I had uh, my first employee, I call him employee zero because someone else was paying his salary for a few months. Um, and um, employee zero was a, a computer scientist and I asked him to simulate what Michelle had done um, because you know, now we're in a company and we need to be sure of everything. He simulated it and told me out of all possible frames, now let's get this, we, use, we used eight bits per, uh, per symbol and we had 64 symbols. Uh, so you can imagine how many combinations of data there was. He said there are six frames out of all the possible frames that will not make it through. And that was very annoying. I mean, you know, if, if, uh, how can you have communications if some frames will never make it through? So I called Michelle and said, we have a problem. And he said, what? I, uh, you know, I explained to him. So he came and he had his simulation on his disk and, you know, it worked. And, um, you know, we compared notes, and apparently he was using the um, uh, encryption, you know, the, uh, the coding, the multiplying times the complex number. And I said, why are you doing that? He said, well, it's in the patent. I used it. I said, but, you know, you never said, you said it's not good. He said, no, I used it. So that encryption or multiplying times a complex number saved the day. And we didn't uh, actually file it in the, uh, in the U.S. patent, meaning we didn't claim it. It was written in the patent, but not claimed. Um, which means it was ours, but, you know, we, we cannot enforce it on anybody else. So, um, we, um, you know, uh, um, a little after that, I, you know, uh, decided that uh, I want to describe OFDM differently. Instead of saying it was many frequencies added together, I said it's many codes added together. So there was CDMA, and if you used all the CDMA codes for one user, all theoretical codes, 
For one user, it's the same result. If you used all frequencies or all codes, it's the same result. So we talked about adding codes, and I said, why use all? Use from one to n, not necessarily n. And that was really what started uh, the speed of 3G. So 3G was more of an accident because of that encryption. Um, and just for the world of patents, we are only about, I think, 11 days ahead of someone else in filing. So, you know, technologies develop, everybody develops them at the same time, um, you know, the, the, it bubbles, you know, the, it, but patents are important. Um, we built a company, we focused on outdoors, we, we built WiMAX products from day one, so outdoor products that go far. Um, we didn't, I didn't do anything, I didn't build anything for Wi-Fi, I didn't contribute to the standard except allow it to use our patent, and that was in 98. Um, in 2004, uh, Broadcom and Intel were big now into the uh, Wi-Fi. We had talked to everybody and had hoped that they would license uh, quietly and nicely, and we had the promise from uh, Cisco that we, they would license before they sold anything. Uh, unfortunately, when they had their first press release about launching uh, OFDM products, um, it was Bloomberg who set us up as enemies. They said, you know, but Cisco's going to have a problem because Wyland owns the patent and Wyland, you know, is planning to be aggressive about its patent. N you know, we own the patent, but we never said we'll be aggressive or anything. Um, so, uh, you know, I phoned Cisco and said, you promised to license. They said, yes, we promised, but look at what uh, Bloomberg said, you know, we need to fight. I said, okay, we'll, we'll fight. And, um, it, it, you know, just cutting a long story short, from, I think it was 2011, where we reached settlement with almost everybody in the industry, uh, Wyland collected over $700 million on those patents. If I was the CEO at the time, I would have, co I would have collected $2 billion. But, um, you know, you can't win everything. The, um, uh, you know, the, the 4G, we didn't collect anything on. The 4G is not big yet. Um, the, the only funny thing was Apple. When we, um, uh, you know, and I, I don't like suing. Before suing companies, I stepped down. Um, but in any case, when uh, we settled with everybody because we had sued 25 companies, and the companies that make the semiconductors promised to uh, cover everybody else. So four companies covered the bill of everybody, of the, you know, the rest of the 25 companies. But to get the 21 other companies off, we asked for $2 million each just so that they don't say afterwards that we sued them unnecessarily. Um, everybody paid except Apple, and they said, we're comfortable, we're never going to sue you, and we, we're, we're not planning to use your technology on our own. Well, about one and a half years before the patent expired, they launched the iPhone 3G. And, of course, that caused about 280 million of damages. Um, and we're still in court over that. And the judge has already ruled that if they are found infringing, that, you know, it would be willful infringement because they know of the patent and, you know, have all reasons that they should have um, licensed. So, um, you know, I, I'm here to say that, you know, the, in the Arab world, in the, you know, the, uh, uh, I'm from Egypt, I believe that, um, you know, we are missing a lot of uh, on innovation. Um, we, we invent a lot, we are, um, you know, need is the mother of all in innovation. And uh, accordingly, we, we invent a lot, but we don't file for, uh, for patents. Um, you know, the, um, the reason for that is, you know, lack of respect for intellectual property. Um, we don't, uh, you know, speaking from, uh, as an Egyptian, you know, unfortunately in Egypt, uh, people copy everything. They copy movies, they copy programs, they copy books. You know, they, they have no uh, appreciation for intellectual property. And uh, accordingly, it, it goes back to that they don't respect their own intellectual property. So, you know, with that, um, you know, Egypt is, um, you know, and the Arab world is losing a lot of money on patents and, and so on. Um, you know, it's... Uh, it's, it's real, it's, you know, it's, uh, you know, my, um, you know, uh, I had retired in 2008, um, came back uh, at the beginning of this year because two of my friends, one was Michel Fatouche, who's my partner all uh, through my life, and um, uh, another friend, Said Amr al-Hamamsi, had invented a technology 
that is related to the Internet of Things and the, uh, you know, it's basically a Wi-Fi router that talks to other Wi-Fi routers. Many people have that, but theirs is intelligent. So if one router in the middle fails, it immediately it finds another route and heals itself. And they have patents on it and everything. So that's a phenomenal technology. Just to give you an idea, um, one gigabyte of data costs the phone company, the, the mobile company, about 10 units, um, you know. And uh, in 3G, in 4G, it's about four units, 3.75 exactly. In Wi-Fi, it's one unit. In Wi-Fi with this mesh technology, it's half a unit. So communications is gonna be much cheaper. You're not gonna get it first. Of course, the phone company is using the savings for, to increase their profits right now, but later you're gonna see it uh, with the help of you know, big companies and um, you know, the, we, we're working very hard to lower the costs of communication so everybody gets access and you know, more people use uh, the, the, the internet and you know, have access to information. Um, so, you know, and, and my, my target is really to help the, uh, the you know, the Arabs, and the, the, this region of the world to, you know, uh, be more in the innovative side. I tell you a very sad statistic. Addresses from the Arab world filed 70 patents in the, in the U.S. in 2010. Israel alone filed 130. So, you know, it's a very dis disproportionate number not because of lack of innovation, it's because of lack of interest. So I really, my message is, you know, file, uh, you know, protect your intellectual property, um, you know, um, open source is open source, you know, but your idea is your idea when, in, you know, in certain things and you've got to file for it. Um, you know, I, I, I personally help people do that, um, you know, so if, you know, if you have a great idea or something, just talk to me about it and I would be glad to help and, uh, you know, sh show you what to do with it. Anyway, thank you very much. <laughs>